everybody. My name is Destiny Williams, and I'm currently the Vice President of the Central Virginia Community and a member of the Republic of Next Vietnam, um, Next Generation. And it's my honor to introduce a very important person in this event. We are pleased to welcome you to Scott Busby. One of the clothing figures in the State of Department who is work closely with the Vietnamese community to address a number of issues with the Vietnamese government, include political prisoner, minority rights, the freedom of expression, association, and the religion. He has been recently promoted to acting senior bureau advisor in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor of U.S. Department of the State. Please congrats him on his new role. And please welcome Mr. Scott Busby. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be here again. Um, I asked Denise Taylor, who is with me here today, how many years in a row have I come to this event? Because, uh, uh, so it's six years in a row. This is wow. my sixth uh, anniversary of coming to this event. Uh, <laughs> Time for change in Vietnam. Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, I want to thank the organizers, uh, especially Dr. Kwan, who is the founder of this event, but for, to all of you as well, involved in organizing the event and uh, coming here. Uh, it's also great to see that the event continues to have the support of so many members of Congress, staffers, uh, and other members of the community uh, to engage on this important topic. Uh, in the past year, the United States has continued to build a comprehensive partnership with Vietnam. And as you all know, President Trump was there only a few months ago and met with the senior leaders of Vietnam. And we're working with them to achieve our shared vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific region. We've also welcomed opportunities for growing our political security, economic, and people-to-people -people ties and our joint efforts to address humanitarian and legacy war issues. We're also grateful to the government of Vietnam for hosting the summit between the U.S. government and the North Korean uh, government. But today is not about our broader relationship with Vietnam. It's about the human rights situation in Vietnam. And suffice it to say that we continue to have very serious concerns about the many human rights abuses that continue to take place in Vietnam. As I have said before, both here and to the Vietnamese government, the U.S. and Vietnam cannot achieve the full potential of a relationship unless the government of Vietnam addresses its various serious human rights shortcomings. Since last year, there have been some positive things that have happened. We now have Mother Mashu, Fortunately, here in the front row, released from jail. She shouldn't have been in jail in the first place, but we're very glad that she's here now with her two children, enjoying freedom in the United States. We also celebrate the release of my good friends from the Brotherhood for Democracy, Nguyen Van Dai and Lei Tu Ha who both now are uh, in Germany. I understand they may be coming to the United States soon. I don't know who's organizing their visit, but I very much want to see them when they come to the United States. But the joy of these three releases is overshadowed by the many more prisoners of conscience who remain imprisoned in Vietnam, and the increasing number of people being arrested for exercising their fundamental in 2016, Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Hoan Phuc called the environmental damage caused by 
the toxic waste from the Formosa steel plant, quote, the most serious environmental disaster Vietnam has ever faced. However, it was activists who brought attention to this crisis, such as Le Dinh Nguyen and Nguyen Van Hoa, who sought to help the victims of this disaster, and they're the ones who really have paid the price for this disaster. Li Din Huang is currently serving an unprecedented 20 year sentence for activities, alleged activities, attempting to overthrow the state. In addition, the Vietnamese authorities have not allowed his family to visit him. Tran Thi Hoa is another courageous human rights advocate. Even after being beaten by authorities, she has continued to stand up for women, for prisoners, for victims of human trafficking. She is currently serving a nine-year prison sentence for, quote, using the internet to spread some propaganda videos and writings that are against the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, close quote. To add to her hardship, she was moved to a prison a thousand kilometers away from her home, far, far away from her partner, and four sons. In addition, just like Libby Lou, I want to raise my very, our very serious concern about the Radio Free Asia blogger Trung Zui Nat. As Libby mentioned, he was in Thailand, he had sought refuge there, he applied for asylum there in Thailand. We have pictures of him after he had dropped his asylum application in the box of UNHCR, and then magically he disappears, and then magically reappears in Vietnam. And we still have no explanation from the government of Thailand or from the government of Vietnam how he magically went from the streets of Bangkok to a prison outside of Hanoi. I am going to Vietnam next week for our annual Human Rights Dialogue, and one of my priorities will be to demand an explanation from the Vietnamese authorities for how the I also ask to see him. I doubt that the Vietnamese authorities will allow that, but we are hoping to see his wife and his lawyer to see what they may know about the situation and to offer our support to them. Unfortunately, these individuals are not isolated cases. It is with great distress, I know that there are currently over 100 prisoners of conscience in Vietnam, including 40 arrested during last year alone. We urge Vietnam to release all such prisoners and respect their human rights. Freedom of expression, including for the press, is a very important human right, and we believe it should be absolutely Protected. So it is also with great concern that we note that the government of Vietnam continues to erode this freedom. Rather than improvement, we, we have seen a worsening environment for free expression in the last year in Vietnam, including with the implementation of the new cybersecurity law. This law gives the Vietnamese government even more control and expands their ability to use vague national security concerns to detain those simply expressing their views online. The youth of Vietnam have avidly embraced social media. I know because I have a number of them as Facebook, Facebook friends, and so I receive a lot of posts from them. But the restrictions in the cybersecurity law inhibit their creative contributions to a developing Vietnamese society. Further, the cybersecurity law adds to an already restricted environment for the press. The government has complete control over the media, so publishers and reporters extensively self-censor to avoid retribution. Despite this, the government remains unforgiving in its censorship. Last June, they temporarily suspended the license of one of the most reputed news publications. We urge the government of Vietnam to allow all of its people to express their views, even when they differ from those held by the government. We call for the repeal of vague legal provisions used to target dissent, and we encourage Vietnam 
to take steps in reforming its criminal justice system to better protect rights guaranteed in its constitution and its international obligations and commitments. Another key freedom that we're concerned about is the freedom of religion. The government has done some positive things in this area. They now have an open dialogue with the Catholic Church, which we support. We also remain optimistic that the government will continue to work with the leadership of the Tu Tiem, lovers of the Holy Cross Convent in Hanoi, to preserve their convent and nearby church and to designate them as religious and cultural heritage sites. But this modest progress does not extend to all religious groups. The unregistered Kwa Hao, Buddhists, the Kao Dai, I see some representatives of the Kao Dai here, Hmong Christians, as well as activist Catholics, continue to experience police intimidation, harassment, and even arrest on account of their faith. Ho Da Kwa, a Catholic activist and reporter who frequently highlight, highlighted the plight of the country's persecuted Catholic minority, land disputes between the government and grassroots communities, is currently serving a 13-year prison term for alleged activities aimed at overthrowing the government. The Law on Belief and Religion, which took effect in January 2018, provides no protection to unregistered religious groups. We will continue to closely monitor the Vietnamese government's implementation of the law and encourage the government to respect the right to freedom of religion or belief. All individuals should be free to attend religious events, whether a church is registered or not. We also encourage the government to implement labor reforms and bring Vietnamese law into compliance with international obligations and commitments, particularly in the area of freedom of association. I note that yesterday the English version of a new labor code was uh, published. Uh, they are soliciting comments and we will be offering extensive comments on that law. We will work towards strengthening citizen groups inside Vietnam that engage with the government to help attack this issue as well as other important issues. Next year marks the 25th anniversary of renewed relations between the United States and Vietnam. That's an important landmark. After years of war and hardship, we're working together towards common goals. But again, I will stress that the relationship cannot become a healthy and normal one until Vietnam does better on human rights. It is in the spirit of friendship and a mutual respect that we encourage the development of a strong, prosper, prosperous, and independent Vietnam that contributes to international security, engages in free, fair, and reciprocal trade, but most importantly, respects human rights and the rule of law. So at the Human Rights Dialogue, next week and beyond, we will work very closely with the Vietnamese government to try to get them to live up to their human rights commitments. Let me close by asking for your continued support, your insight, insights, recommendations, and updates help shape our understanding of what is going on in Vietnam. We are encouraged by some of the positive developments in the U.S. Vietnam relationship over the past year. However, as I said before, this relationship cannot realize its full potential until Vietnam does more to address the serious human rights abuses taking place there now. Thank you very much.